Hello everyone, this is me Rula, and my group members are Majid and Paula, and this is our MCE482 project. And for our project, we'll use the COMSOL software in order to uh, examine the performance of an airfoil. The airfoil we've chose was the NACA4412 airfoil, and we will be studying it in a 2D scenario. So uh, basically, we'll add an extra geometry, and the geometry we'll be adding, we'll be adding an additional uh, slat uh, after the Air Force leading edge and the flap behind the Air Force leading edge. And we'll examine three things. We'll examine the change in lift, the boundary layer separation, and the wake size. So before starting our analysis, we've made a few assumptions. The assumptions we were made were incompressible airflow, laminar and steady state airflow, two-dimensional airflow, and the properties we, we studied were at sea, sea level conditions. Uh, so. Uh, as shown here, this is our NACA 4412 airfoil, and uh, this is our boundary layer conditions. The w uh, inlet velocity was 0 0.1 meters per second. The outlet pressure was zero pascals, and the height was one meter, and the length was six meters. So for our progress of the report, at first we've done the mesh independence test, and the results we studied were the temperature distributions at different angles of attack, the change in wake flow, and the change in lift due to add the addition of flap and slat to the 2D airfoil, and the delay in boundary layer separation. And now Paula will discuss the geometry. Okay, so um, we built our model with the same console, so I'm going to recreate how we did it. First, we want to study a single phase flow, laminar flow, add. We go to study, we want to study a stationary. It's loading. Okay, and now to build the geometry, we had uh, our data points in a file. So we choose in polygon, select file, and then we'll browse our file. Let's go to the Here it is. Now, build all the objects. And here we have the airfoil that we need to do in the wrong orientation. We, we choose a rectangle or width was six, height one. We center it in the middle, height was five. And we build it. And now we need to choose this one. Now we have the ribbon corner on the airflow. For the material, first we need to add the material for the body. We are going to choose air, which is thin. And now what um, we only have left, the boundary conditions. Laminar flow uh, for the inlet, which is this part, and we need to put the velocity, which is 0 0.1 meters per second. And now we add the outlet, which is this part, and the pressure is zero, so it's okay. And now for the mesh uh, and the finish analysis, we did the independence test, and we saw that for our extra fine, it was like the mm, the fraction and um, but sometimes the computer crashed, so we chose normal. From normal upwards, the results didn't vary depending on the on the um, element size, so we're gonna stay with normal. And now we can study. So here we have our results uh, th to see what we want to study first for the, um, the, the pressure, here we have, um, for 
for the if you know the boundary layer separation we have to cut the cross so we need to choose um, a line graph and we want to select the L4 that's where we want to calculate the distance and now we want to see the, the pressure in Pascals we plot it and the lowest point will be the product of boundary layer separation. And now for the lift force, we do an integration. Here, line separation. And we want to calculate this. The chassis in the centimeter. Okay, now if we evaluate this, we will get the lift force here. So now for the study of additional bound, uh, additional geometries for this uh, exact same airfoil, what we could do is that we could go to the geometry and we can add in through the file, we can add the flap that we built prior. And if you see here, it comes after the leading edge below by around 15 degrees. I mean the trailing edge, not the leading edge, sorry. And then we can build another polygon for the slat, and the slat comes before the airfoil. And we bring the difference down here, and then we can subtract, just like we subtracted the airfoil, subtract the slat and the flap. And the slat actually adds a lot of improvement for delaying the boundary layer separation, as well as improving the lift. So does the flap also for the lift. And now we will see it in a test run. So I'll just build all, do the same material, same inlet outlet, just have to build the mesh again, and then do the study. Okay, now the most visible thing is that, see, we have here, we have this uh, fast wind here that causes like a disturbance to the weight flow which we is one of the things we studied. So the disturbance of the fast uh, speed, the fast um, wind above the flap, and then the high pressure wind, which is very slow below the flap. This creates a form of like a turbulent uh, wake flow that takes a lot longer to recover than from a normal uh, wake wave that comes in if we didn't have the flap, for example. Uh, the thing that we can also notice here now, we are doing this at zero degrees angle of attack. You can see the stagnation point over here at the, at the slat. So this is where we have the lowest velocity and where we will have, if we go through here, we'll have the highest pressure. If we zoom out, you can see here the highest pressure at 79.22 times 10 to the power of negative four at the stagnation point. And if we want to, let's say, we want to put the system at a different angle of attack. We could either rotate the flap, slat, and the airfoil, or we could rotate, for example, the rectangle. And if we rotate the rectangle, it's going to be the same effect as if we uh, bent the airfoil and the rest of the system, build all. So now we have air coming in at an angle of attack of 10 degrees. And we again mesh, build all, compute. And now we will see the effect of the slat on the boundary layer, which is major. So as we could see here, we have this very fast flowing air coming in through this gap between the slat and the airfoil. And what this fast air does is that it will delay boundary layer separation. So as we could see here, we still have some form of boundary layer, which we will better see with the streamlines. Sorry, just a second back. Yes. 
Okay, so So as you can see here, through the streamlines, we can see that the air sticks for longer time over the top of the airport. And this provides stability and it uh, delays stall because then we will have um, less pressure gradient across the uh, airfoil, which will cause stall. And we could also see that, as we said, if we have fast air, the faster the fluid, the thinner the boundary layer. And that's true, and it sticks more. As you can see here, a thinner boundary layer, it sticks longer on the airfoil. We can also go to the results, uh, to the integration. We can see that the addition of the flap and the slat, as well as bending it, does really increase the lift force uh, in comparison to using just a flap at zero degrees. And even if we were to uh, use this system at zero degrees, so let's say we bring back the rectangle, put it at zero. So now we're at zero angle of attack uh, for this with the slat and the flap. And we mesh it again, just to compare it with without the addition of the flap and the slat. As you can see, it's loading. And now we can go to the line integration, evaluate. So as you can see, this is the airfoil at zero degrees with the slat and the flap. It's 0 0.0022. But without the slat and the flap, it's 0 0.001. So it's almost double the lift just adding the slat and the flap. And that's not only because it's extra surface area, so we have more, like, more area for the pressure to act on, but also because of the improvement uh, of the flow that the slat gives and the flap does. Yep, I think uh, this concludes the demo. As you can see, we could also go here. We could see that at, uh, at the first time at, without the flap and the slat, was at around uh, it's at almost 0 0.35. The top now with the slat and the flap, we it's almost at around 0 0.36, which is a minor improvement at zero degrees angle of attack. But as you will see, Professor, in the results in the um, report, at higher angles of attack, you will have a much later uh, boundary layer separation point when you have a slat, because as we've said, the slat uh, changes the airflow around the airfoil, which improves the boundary layer sticking to the top. And in turn, it delays stall when the aircraft is flying. So with that, we have presented the ways we found our results. Mainly, we looked at streamlines. We found the boundary layer separation point using the pressure plot. And we also looked at line filtration to find lift. And that is before and after adding the additional geometry. We can see that there is a positive effect from the additional geometry on the lift, on the boundary layer separation. And it also, as we uh, saw previously, the, uh, the weight, weight that gets produced generally takes longer to recover and is less intense than when we don't have a flap because the flap acts as a disturbing factor to the wake wave. With that, we conclude the presentation. And uh, thank you, doctor, for your time. Thank you to anyone who will watch this video for their time. We hope you found it to be uh, a good presentation.